ladies and gentlemen, my name is Kurt, and welcome to space. Spacewalk, to be more specific. This is a game that I recently found out about, and as you can probably already tell, you know exactly why I have to play it. Uh, it's called Spacewalk. It is basically a, a spacewalk, I guess you could call it a simulator. A, a little, uh, game that isn't quite a game quite yet, but uh, it was developed apparently over the course of five days as uh, a person's assignment for USC's Interactive Media Masters of Fine Arts program. Uh, and it's designed to be compatible with the Oculus Rift, the virtual reality thing that's been making all the waves lately. Obviously, I do not have an Oculus Rift, so we're playing the version that is just intended for your screen. Uh, it is available for Windows, Mac, and Linux, uh, and there is multiplayer support where you can join other spacewalkers hanging out outside the International Space Station. I'm playing on my own right now. I decided that would be the best way for me to learn how to control my spacesuit and kind of just explore the International Space Station here some 300 kilometers above the surface of the Earth. Uh, but yeah, this is basically... there's, there's really no... oh, there's my shadow. There's really no overlying purpose. There's no goals or anything yet. I don't know if that's something they're going to add, but very cool. Uh, very cool indeed. I am in control with looking around with just my my mouse here within my spacesuit. Uh, and then controls W, A, S, D, and Q and E. Uh, up and down, W and S are kind of your your tilt, I guess, on your, your horizontal axis. A and D are your thrusters left and right. Got some strange happenstances with the uh, the graphics going on there. I'm not sure why that is. Uh, Q and E are your, your reverse thrusters. Okay, and then to go backwards, you use them both at the same time. So... W A S D. If I push A and D at the same time, that thrusts me forward. If I push Q and E at the same time, that's thrusts me backwards. A little bit confusing. Uh, I think. Okay, there we go. That's better. I pressed P. That reverses my. Uh... Oh, that also reverses the way I can look around. That's confusing. Yeah, I'll I'll leave it like that. P. It reverses the. What's that called? Uh... Inverse controls. But yeah, there's. We're just basically outside the International Space Station here. I'm not sure. I th it looks like a very accurate. Aside from the strange light glitches that I'm getting. I don't know why I'm getting that. I put the. Maybe I should put the graphics lower. There are no real, like, graphic options. It's like low, medium, or high for your graphics. But there. That moon is, uh, not accurately sized. <laughs> I'll tell you that much right now. I think that was the moon. Uh oh, I'm seeing things. Uh, but yeah, we're outside what appears to be... All right, all right, let's, uh, a little bit hard to control. But no, no, let's go forward. Uh, we're outside, if I can get over to it. Oh dear lord, oh dear lord. Hold on, this is gonna bump a little bit. Boink, all right, we're good. We're good, we're not good, we are tumbling, tumbling out of control. All right, here we go. Let's back up. There we go. I was gonna say, off to my left, I believe I saw... the Quest airlock, which is where, on the American side of the space station, all of the spacewalks take place. Let me try to tilt. Yeah, that little small area right there. That's the Quest airlock. Uh... That's where we would have exited from. There's a bunch of handrails. You can't grab onto anything. You can check whoop, your oxygen with the right click. And that's the oxygen gauge, although it was out of the screen. All right, let's... Oh, gosh. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Kind of uh, an interesting time for me to have discovered this and be playing this, because actually in real life on the International Space Station, there's a little bit of an issue. And tomorrow on Saturday, the 11th of May, they're planning on a an emergency spacewalk because there is an ammonia leak 
off this piece, bleh, excuse me, the P6 truss. I'm actually, I believe I'm going over there, or at least one of the trusses. Uh, ammonia is actually the coolant that they use. Uh, and this, that, that blue thing on my left, oh, it is really hard to control here. The blue thing on the left here, that's a solar panel. Uh, this little accordion looking thing on the right, or right directly in front of me, which looks like a solar panel. It is not a solar panel, that's actually a radiator. They pump the liquid ammonia throughout the radiator and then back into the, the space station and on the various parts that need cooling, batteries, systems, and things like that. Uh, and then, of course, there's ammonia pumps and tanks, and that's where they're having one of the leaks. The astronauts noticed a venting of, of frozen flakes of ammonia. And they've known there has been a leak, and they've known about it for quite a while, but it seems to have gotten worse in the last few days, so they're going to have to do an emergency spacewalk. The astronauts, they say, are not in any danger. It's not like the space station is going to stop operating or anything like that. There's there's two trusses. There's obviously multiple backup systems and whatnot, so... But this is something they want to fix, because leaking ammonia is not something that they want to be happening. So they're going to be planning an emergency spacewalk. Uh, this is, however, on Monday, three astronauts were due to return in their Soyuz capsule, which, if I can arrange myself properly, although we are going into orbital sunset. Uh, the Soyuz capsule, that's the American side on the left, and on the right, as things get a little bit more strange-looking, are the, the Russian segment. I don't see any Soyuz capsules docked. Uh, which would not be accurate. Because there always has to be a Soyuz capsule docked whenever there are astronauts on board. Um, yeah, I don't know. This doesn't look like a full-scale model of the space station, but it's pretty close. But yeah, they were due to return uh, next Monday, but that looks like that's probably going to be delayed because one of those astronauts who were due to return would be one of them with the experience to go out and do the spacewalk tomorrow, so we'll see. Uh, but yeah, kind of an interesting time, I guess. Uh, yeah, let's get a better overview here. Let me... I'm, I'm also going to note, I am in kind of a... Yeah, it looks like... Oh, let's back up a little bit. I want to try to get a little bit of an overview. Yeah, it's looking like this is kind of just a small model of the International Space Station, or perhaps the space station as it was in progress, because there's only two solar panels, when, when in fact there are four on this side of the truss. Uh, I, I am floating out here in space. <laughs> oh, that's cool. I just noticed the little drink nozzle, the little blue thing in my face there. That's where you'd get a, a drink of water. Very cool. The spacesuit. Uh... I'm floating out here in space with a, a jetpack. Uh, this is actually not something that happens anymore. Uh, from the shadow, it looked like they give you the uh, the MMU, which is the Man Maneuvering Unit. I believe is what it's called. Uh, that you might recognize. It's kind of that large, it looks like a big chair. From very famous photos of uh, astronaut Bruce McCandless. McCandless? I don't know how to say his name where he's drifts away from the space shuttle and they have the really poignant picture on the cover of Life magazine of him far away, just alone in the darkness of space above Earth. Uh, that was the man maneuvering unit. They don't use that anymore. It was retired in 1984 because after that, the Challenger disaster happened and untethered astronaut EVA was deemed to be too unnecessarily risky. Uh, so they, they no longer use the man maneuvering unit. They do have, currently, uh, what's called a safer pack, which is a little attachment that goes on to the astronauts' backpacks, which is kind of a miniaturized maneuvering unit that in an emergency, in, in the case an astronaut were to get... Let me go forward a little bit. Were to get detached from their tether that they could deploy and use to maneuver back to safety. Uh, and the last time that was tested was in 1994 on STS-64, and that was officially the last 
untethered space flight or uh, spacewalk rather EVA uh, in in history. Uh, everything since then on the space station at Hubble have all you know you you see all the cables and clips and cords that astronauts have to keep themselves attached to the space station and things. Uh, so this it makes sense why they made this game this way. It would be pretty boring if you had to like just translate well not boring but even difficult and you wouldn't get much of this overview. If you had to be constantly having a hand on a handrail or something like that. Ooh, ooh, okay, all right, spinning out of control. It's a little bit difficult to control here. Why am I all shaky? So let me check my oxygen. Whoops. I cannot see my oxygen because of the sunlight. Oh, doing plenty, plenty good, plenty well. Uh, let me, uh, I guess I'm going over to the Russian segment, aren't we? <laughs> I'm pressing uh, A and D to thrust my rear thrusters at the same time, which would give me forward thrust. Well, now that the music stopped, I suppose this is an accurate representation. People say, there's no sound in space. True. Since there's no atmosphere, but within the spacesuit there is atmosphere, there is pressure. So astronauts can obviously hear things within the spacesuit, so all they would hear is their spacesuit. And of course ground control through the radio and themselves breathing and whatnot. And whatever mechanical bumps and, and movement that they hear whenever they interact with something. Uh, oh, those must be the little docking... Uh, Huh, I wonder if eventually they're going to plan on adding, like, a, a docking system. Oh, excuse me. You know, like, instead of being on EVA in the spacesuit, maybe you're on approach. I'm guessing that is intended to be the Soyuz right there. Something like that. I'm trying to get myself positioned properly. Whoop, what was that flash? Oh god, that might have been a, uh... What are those things called? A, uh... Ah, oh, what is that called? That does happen. A gamma ray? Hit? Not a gamma ray, a, uh... There are little particles. Subatomic particles flying through space. And sometimes the astronauts say they... You know, if they hit your retina... Neutrino? I think it's a neutrino hit, or something like that. If they hit your retina or something like that, you'll actually see a flash. But, you know, this is, these are the sort of particles that are flying through our bodies unimpeded hundreds of times a day anyway, but you just get a little bit more up in space because you're not protected by the atmosphere. Yeah, but here we are over on the derpy Russian side. <laughs> no, <laughs> They like to keep things real over here. None of this fancy, shiny metallic surfaces that we have. Oh, wrong way. I want to go forward. Is that a, like a little uh, viewport? This is awesome. This would be incredibly disorienting with the Oculus Rift, I must say. It'd be cool. I'd like to try this out. I think that might... Is that... That might supposed to be... Might... Bleh, that might be a supposed to be a, a a window port or something like that although that seems rather large to be honest very cool I do like how the depth of field kind of changes like I'm looking at this part and to my left that the rest of the station is a little bit out of focus but then when I go over and look at it it gets in focus Check our oxygen. Doing very good. We've got a docking port. I don't see the arm. The connect the Canada Canada arm, the the robotic arm. Although that's more closer, I believe. To the Oh, it's the cupola. Let's go over there. Let's go over to the cupola. All right, uh, forward. All right, so it's kind of a slightly smaller representation of the International Space Station, but they still have things like the cupola and 
you're just missing a few uh, solar panels, I guess. The the trusses aren't as large as they could be, but they're still working on it. This is, I'm playing, I suppose, for people in the future if this thing gets developed further. I'm playing in version 0.63. Where they've kind of just added more multiplayer support. Ah, watch your head, guy. Watch your head. And forward. Ooh, watch your head. <laughs> this would be so awesome, guys. You have no idea how much I actually want to do this in real life. Obviously, if you're an actual astronaut, you're, you've are got no time to just float around and sightsee. You've actually got a mission and tasks to perform and people telling you what to do in your, your ear and stuff like that. And God, I wish the I wish we would, we would get out of this orbital sunset. That's another thing. I don't think you can really see... <laughs> Notice all like the Milky Way and the colors and stuff. That I don't think you can really see because the 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 shine from the Earth and the Sun and and your own lights. You know your eyes don't adapt to the dark adaptness to see that. And also these particles, they're these little floaty particles. I think the game developer probably put that in there just so you would have an idea of where you were traveling in relation. But there aren't. Usually these, that would be a bad thing. That would be like, oh my gosh, we have a very serious leak if there are all these white little fuzzy particles. All right, let's check out the cupola. Slow down, reverse thrust. Oh yeah, that right there, that little circle thing. The yellow, with the yellow ring, that is where a, the, uh, the Canada arm would attach to. And same with, there's one over there on the middle of that module. It's probably, what is that? I'm trying to remember the name of all the modules. I don't remember. Ooh. Harmony? No, Harmony is connected to Quest. Ah. That Oh, that might be the Japanese. Oh, gosh, I'm going to bump my head on the cupola. Oh, you can't see inside. Boo. No, that makes sense. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on. Hold up. Hold up. Uh-oh, uh uh-oh. I keep forgetting that uh, the controls aren't inverted. Yeah, I don't see the arm. Ooh. Cosmic ray? I think that, yeah, that's what I was looking for, not neutrino. Cosmic rays! Yeah, there, right there is where you'd be able to line up the, the arm. A robotic arm and then attach to that point and then the little clamp clamps down on those three uh, little things I know too much about this stuff because I used to watch like spacewalks in their entirety because <laughs> I am a giant nerd <laughs> uh, but yeah I think I guess another thing quickly I could I could mention uh, I saw a trailer. There's a new movie coming out in October called Gravity, starring George Clooney and Sandra Bullock, about space, bleh, excuse me, spacewalkers who apparently survive some sort of disaster on the space station or space shuttle, but are left floating alone in space without hope of rescue or, or contact with the ground or something like that. Kind of a suspense thriller, I suppose. Uh, saw a trailer for it. It certainly looks terrifying. There's a whole bag of nope going along with that. Getting stranded in space. Uh, it's made, uh, the director is the same guy who did Children of Men, which I enjoyed that movie, so there's definitely going to be very some very extended, uncut, uh, single-shot stuff going on with that. So uh, I'll, I'll hold out judgment for that, but there's some back and forth I've been reading on some of these spaceflight and NASA blogs, and uh, they're saying that there were reports that perhaps NASA refused to offer support and, and consultation for that movie, and then there's differing reports that NASA reached out to the filmmakers saying, we'd like to help you 
with the the accuracy and perhaps the filming of this this movie and the filmmakers refused help uh, so there's conflicting reports it's kind of I, I guess if you don't know a lot of times when there is a movie that takes place in space or has some sort of space-like theme NASA uh, storyline or plot NASA tends to reach out and offer support for both accuracy and also filming locations uh, that well I guess accuracy is possibly not the best word you know they helped out with Armageddon they, they were able to film at Houston and Kennedy Space Center and stuff like that uh, and other things like that but uh, kind of interesting oh this, yeah this might I think this is the space station as it was uh, before a lot of other modules because this right here is the the external experiment platform which is actually the Japanese, uh, it's kind of a little, uh, deck, I guess you could say, that they can put experiments that are exposed to the vacuum of space. And I am now currently going to expose my own face to the side of it, apparently, because, ow! Oh gosh, alright, alright. Uh, but yeah, this is actually connected to the Kibo module. But right now, it appears to be connected to... One of the American modules here. Cool. Ah. Yeah, I don't like. Personally, I do not like how. Why is it's like a it's a ghost moon. That's no moon. Yeah, like what happened to the moon? Come back. It, yeah, okay. There appears to be some issues. Perhaps because I'm not using an Oculus Rift, it's like. Yeah, it seems to be trying to adjust things for... Whoa! Spinning out of control. For my, like, left and right eye. Alright, getting kind of dizzy. Alright, so yeah, I, like I said, there, this is really all there is, is just kind of exploring. I'll, I'll put a link in the video description, the doobly-doo, if you do. Uh, where you can download for yourself. Like I said, it's Windows, Mac, Linux compatible, so you can check it out. I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll keep this on my computer. Maybe... I haven't tried the multiplayer thing. It's really just, I suppose, the fact that there's other astronauts kind of just randomly floating around. I don't know that you can really interact or work with them. I suppose maybe eventually, like I said, in, in additional versions, they'll improve the strange lighting things like we're having there, but also the... there might be some missions or tasks to undertake such as replacing an ammonia valve or, or pump or something like that. Uh, but yeah, this is Spacewalk. I was going to try to very fancily try to find my way to the uh, the quest airlock, but I have I have forgotten where it's located. Uh, that is a module. So is that... Oh, I think it's... It, oh, yeah, it's over by those suitcases. Suitcases? It's like where they put the tools. Obviously, for spacewalk, whoa! Or by the, the quest airlock. Alright, let's, let's go. Now, here we go, Kerbal Space Program developers. First-person EVAs. Alright, trying to go forward. Things are very slow. Let's check our oxygen. I cannot see. I think we're still in the green. Yeah, I don't think that's actually something that actually changes in this version of the game. Yeah, alright, there it is. Quest airlock. There's those little, uh... Yeah, they look like little trunks. I guess that's where they keep a lot of the uh, equipment and stuff for EVAs. There's a little tool cases on the side there. It's kind of a work platform, is what that's called. Cool. Accuracy! Achoo! Oh, I think that's supposed to be a window right there, but it's just acting as a mirror. Oop. Alright, I'm going to try 
to maneuver back to the airlock, and then we will end this video. Woo! Uh, forward. Very nice. Steering, steering. This is very cool. I like this. It's kind of peaceful. <laughs> uh, float in space. Back to the airlock. I can see right through the airlock, so we have some missing textures there. That might be a problem. Oh, do I have a light? I don't know what that little blinkiness is. I think it might be a light. Whoa, okay. All right, so yeah. Let's take one final look at our pale blue globe beneath us. That would be crazy. And that, whoa, flashes. Cosmic ray hit, don't mind. Also don't mind the texture seams in the planet. Don't worry about that at all. I blame global warming. No, <laughs> uh, cool. Gah. When do I get to go on a real spacewalk? It's the future. I think, as a little bit of a, a poignant last thought, I think it was best described, you know, people always ask astronauts what it's like to spacewalk, and uh, Mike Massimino, who's Astro Mike on Twitter, described it. He went up to Hubble and everything like that. Uh, he described it as it's almost, you know, when you're out there in a spacewalk and you're in your little spaceship here, your spacesuit, and you look out and you see the Earth, he says you almost want, your, your instinct is to look away because it's almost something like, I shouldn't be seeing this. This is not a perspective that a human being should have. This is something that's too, too awesome and amazing and beautiful to, to be laying my eyes on. Uh, so that, I think, is a very cool human uh, reaction and description of what it's like to be spacewalking out here 300 kilometers above the surface of our planet indeed would be the only word I would have for it indeed whoop 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 alright well as we're tumbling out of control thanks for watching my name is Gert I will see you next time.